So the first thing we need to understand is the terminology. You'll hear people talk about WinRM and WSMAN, and they kind of sound very similar, but they're actually different things. WSMAN is an industry standard communication protocol. WSMAN allows computers to communicate with each other over a defined set of ports. We can further protect your connection using SSL, which will add another layer of encryption. So we've got this WSMAN protocol, which Microsoft has now adopted as their remoting protocol. WinRM is the Microsoft service that implements and manages that protocol. So that is where we end up with two things that kind of look the same. WinRM is the service and WSMAN is the protocol. Now, in order to use remoting, obviously there are some things that we need to do. This WSMAN protocol and the WinRM service was first introduced with PowerShell 2. And these things are all part of this broader Windows management framework that we've installed in order to get PowerShell. The new version, version 3, includes a newer version of WSMAN, although a lot of things that I'm going to demonstrate in this lesson really apply to version 2. This does require a non-public network on the clients. That is the place where you're going to initiate your remoting session from. That was definitely true in version 2. In version 3, it is possible to enable remoting on public networks. It requires a few extra steps. I hopefully, I don't think most of you will run into that. And it is also by default on server operating systems in PowerShell 3. It's automatically enabled. The best thing to have in order to work with remoting and to keep it secure is a domain environment. Because with a domain environment, we can default to use Kerberos, which gives us the mutual authentication, which is really critical here when we're doing remoting. If you don't have that, if you have, say, a workgroup type environment, then you're going to need to install certificates on your machines and configure PowerShell remoting and your WinRM connections to use SSL. It requires a little more work. Hopefully, I'm assuming most of you will be in a domain environment. So once remoting is set up, it's actually quite easy to use. And here's an example of kind of how it works. Now, the remoting that I'm talking about is PowerShell remoting. This is different than the command list that you see with the dash computer name parameter. Those things like get service dash computer name or get process dash computer name, those are using kind of the legacy DCOM approach and not using remoting. So you can continue to use those command lists even if you don't have PowerShell remoting enabled. The remoting that I'm talking about is when we want to say run a command on a remote machine or work with a PS session, which I'll cover later in this course. So the client sends some command, usually it's a PowerShell command, for example, and it sends that command via WSMAN to some server. It can be one or more servers. By default, PowerShell uses ports 5985 and 5986 for HTTP and HTTPS connections, respectively. You can modify those settings if you want, but because this is a single port, this makes things much more firewall friendly, as opposed to using things like DCOM and WMI, which also uses DCOM, where we now have a broad range of ports and things are shifting, and it's not very firewall friendly. Remoting, single port, much easier to work with. So on the server side, he's listening for requests. He's got a big set of ears, and he's listening on those ports, saying, hey, is there anything there for me to do? When it gets that command, it passes it to a endpoint. The endpoint is just a plug-in like a connection, and in our case, it's going to be a PowerShell instance. So the server will see the command that comes in and hand it off to the little PowerShell instance, which will do its thing. And then the results, which are serialized, go back across the wire. Again, same type of ports. It can be encrypted or not if you want to use SSL and go back to the client, and then the client then receives the results and sees them on their screen or can do whatever what you need to do with them.